Welcome to lecture number 4 Foundation of Astronomy Light and Telescope Today we are going to talk about Light and Telescope Most knowledge of the universe beyond earth comes from light So we must understand the properties of light and how telescopes are used to collect light. Properties of light. Light moves at 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second in the vacuum. The speed was first measured by Romer when observing Jupiter's moon. See the figure. When a moon of Jupiter disappears behind the planet, the light must travel 4.2 AU to reach Earth here, but an additional 2 AU to reach when it is here, that is at the third point, the event is seen 16 minutes and 40 seconds late. The absurd delay allowed Romer to measure the speed of light. The speed of light is calculated as 2 AU divided by 16 minutes 40 seconds that is equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. Now light is an electromagnetic wave that is light is a combination of electricity and magnetism. It is a transverse wave which is very similar to a drop of water creating ripples. Sound is a longitudinal wave. Unlike sound, light does not require a material medium to travel through. We can visualize the difference between transverse wave and longitudinal wave from the figure given. A transverse wave creates crest and trough while longitudinal waves creates compression and rarefraction. So transverse wave can be thought as a drop of water in a pond. It produces ripples and the ripples propagates in the direction as shown. So light can be considered as an electromagnetic radiation that travel outward to the space at a speed of light. Now we should know some basic vocabularies while dealing with light. The first one is wavelength. Wavelength is length between crest. Now what is amplitude? Amplitude is simply the height of the wave. Now speed is how fast the wave travels. So light travels at a speed c which is a constant. Frequency can be defined as number of waves that passes by each second. And wavelength and frequencies are connected. Wavelength lambda is equal to C by F where C is speed, F is frequency. Longer the wavelength, lower the frequency. Shorter the wavelength, higher the frequency. Which of the following statement about light is correct? Choice A. As frequency increases, the wavelength increases. As frequency increases, wavelength decreases. C. Changing the frequency has no effect on wavelength. The answer is A. As frequency increases, wavelength decreases. Properties of light. We shall continue and talk about spectrum. Light sorted by frequency and wavelength can be called as spectrum. Visible spectrum is seen in this rainbow. 
red is the longest wavelength and violet is the shortest wavelength now let us talk about photons photons are particle of light light behaves as both a wave and a particle photon carry energy and can have different amounts of energy red photon have less energy blue photon have more energy so it can be compared as red photon can be compared as a five rupee coin while blue photon can be considered as 10 rupee coin so the energy carried by photons varies for red light and blue light to have the same total amount of energy which of the following must be true definitely the answer is b more red photons should be present so that the am- amount of energy is same now let us talk about visible spectra visible spectrum is only a small part of the full electromagnetic spectra gamma rays have the shortest wavelength radio waves have the longest wavelength spectrographs or spectrometer break up the incoming light into different wavelength and hence allow astronomers to analyze those different wavelength question which of the following portion of electromagnetic spectrum has the longest wavelength so from the following choice the answer is p infrared question number 2 which of the following portion of electromagnetic spectrum has the highest energy the answer is a gamma ray last question which of the following portion of the electromagnetic spectra has the fastest speed all have the same speed that is speed of light now coming to the topic telescope the most simplest telescope that you can see is your eye itself the eye sees the wavelength between 350 nanometer that is deep violet to 700 nanometer that is far red so in an eye we have an iris a pupil through which light enters and it falls on retina and retina collects this to the brain through optic nerve so photons are collected by your retina the image which is collected in retina is inverted so brain interprets the image and gives the real picture for you now modern astronomy photography opened the door to modern astronomy astronomers could create permanent images and spectra of celestial objects astronomers could see objects previously too faint to observe by your simple mobile camera you can take fabulous pictures of moon and analyze it so what are the features in the digital detectors which is available with us right now digital detectors are called charge coupled device they are more efficient than film digital recorders record photons as pixels photon creates a signal in the array to create an image now let us talk about the image which is obtained from this ccd sensors each element and molecule interact with the light in a unique way so definitely a unique spectra is obtained for each and every light spectrometers allow astronomer to learn the composition temperature density etc of the celestial body through spectrographs now telescope 
is broadly classified into two according to the mode of their operation that is reflection and refraction reflection occurs as light hits a mirror and bounces off refraction occurs when light enters or leaves a material when a light enters or leaves a material the light bends and this bending causes the light to move in a different path than the original path where it was coming this is the basic principle behind lenses and how lens is able to focus the image to a single point that is focal length now refracting telescopes use lenses there is a primary lens which refracts or bends the light and there is an aperture that is the size of the primary lens which decides the amount of light which is going to the telescope the focal length is the distance between the lens and the image aperture sets the light gathering power larger aperture more light longer focal length larger the image now we have another type of telescope also which uses mirrors reflectant telescopes uses mirrors there are primary and secondary mirrors employed to image a distant object now let us talk about the effects of atmosphere the atmosphere does not allow light through nearly gamma ray x ray uv and infrared wavelength are blocked a range of radio waves is unblocked so radio waves is a very suitable wavelength which can be used to study distant objects so what are radio waves radio waves have the wavelength of centimeters to about 10 meters so definitely the there should be a large collecting area needed radio telescope are typically of tens of meters in diameter these are some interesting pictures showing radio telescopes and we can also have array of radio telescopes so that we get interferometric signals which can be used in a combination to understand the astronomical data better so the combination improves the quality of the astronomical data now one other important point which we have to discuss in telescope is resolution resolution is the smallest detail that can be separated for a given wavelength comma the larger the telescope the better the resolution diffraction changes some light from its path blurring the images so a new technology is right now available called adaptive optics adaptive optics can help correct this atmospheric distortions so earth based image quality can be competed with hubble telescope if we use adaptive optics now what happens when light passes through earth's atmosphere as light approaches earth it is traveling in waves with parallel wave crest but upon entering earth's atmosphere it encounters bubbles of warm or cool air this refract and distorts the wave so that the crest are no no longer parallel so other bubbles also create much more distortions so the wave which is reaching the telescope is distorted so earth atmosphere distorts image because air bubbles refract incoming light waves so astronomical seeing that is a 
term coined to describe the limit on resolution due to atmosphere space based telescope do not suffer from atmospheric blurring space telescope can also detect high energy radiations also that the atmosphere blocks example hubble space telescope use uv visible and ir while chandra uses x ray and spitzer space telescope uses infrared class question why do astronomers use space telescope to be closer to the object they observe or to minimize the effect of the atmosphere the right answer is a to be closer to the objects they observe even though the second one is also there the more right answer is to be closer to the object we observe so to summarize the today's class on light and telescope i can say that light behaves both like a particle and a wave astronomers study light to understand the temperatures and the composition of celestial objects telescopes are used to gather this light some portion of the electromagnetic spectra are best studied from space thank you see you in the next class